Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. This one's for the noobs. If you're just starting out with mixing and maybe you've got a little bit of an understanding of what compression is and how it works, you've probably heard people talk about this thing called parallel compression, which is a little bit different. So if learning how to use compression is a freshman level class, learning how to do parallel compression is like a junior level class. It's not that it's super complicated, but it can be difficult to hear and understand the purpose. So let's talk about parallel compression first, and then we'll listen to an example. What is parallel compression? Parallel just means side by side, right? Parallel compression is a subset of parallel processing. Parallel processing just means taking a signal, splitting it somehow, and then running both copies of that signal through different processing side by side. If we take this drum track and duplicate it, we now have two drum tracks running at the same time. They are parallel to one another. Now, if we take a compressor and compress the second track and not the first, we've got parallel compression. Why in the world would you do this? You've heard compression before. It's an integral part of the mixing process, but sometimes compression can be too aggressive. We like the aggressive bits, but we miss the more natural sound of the recorded track. Parallel compression lets us have both. We can have all the sound of the clean, dry, unprocessed track here, and we can bring in the raw, aggressive, heavily compressed track here alongside it and get the best of both worlds. One of the best examples of this is on a drum kit. As cool as compression is on drums, sometimes it messes with the punchiness of the raw recording. We lose punch as we gain aggression. Parallel compression lets us have both. Let's leave our original track blue and let's make this one red to indicate this is the compressed track. So I'm gonna mute the first one for a second so we're just listening to the second track, but here's what the raw drums sound like. And if I bring in the second one, it's just louder. It's no different, it's just louder. Okay, too loud. Um, we're clipping, wonderful. So I'm gonna listen to just the second track for a second, and we're gonna dial in a really aggressive sound and compression, which to me usually means something with a faster attack and release time, just really over the top aggressive. So we'll go with a higher ratio, we'll pull the threshold down and get something pretty nasty. You can really hear the compression hit when those cymbals come in over here. You hear how the cymbals are going. That's pumping that you hear about when people talk about compression with drums. But there's some cool stuff happening here, especially in this tom section, where the drums went from sounding really good but clean to having a lot of aggression. It's a little too loud now. So we'll pull that back down. Let's compare that now to the dry drums. Just sounds like a really, really nice drum kit. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna blend between the two and see what we get from parallel compression. So the first thing I'll do is turn the second drum all the way down. Turn the first one down a little bit so we've got some room for volume. And uh, let's hear what happens as I introduce the aggressive compressed drums to the dry non-compressed drums. So one of the things that makes it really hard with parallel processing is you're necessarily going to add volume with each, right? We're going to take the volume of both down, but then they're going to add back to each other and increase the volume. So it becomes tricky to compare because as you turn the second one up, it's going to sound better because our human ears like it when things are louder. So even with no compression, it'll sound better with two than one. Okay, that was literally just an increase in volume. There's no tonal change there. It's the same as if I just turned this one fader up. So we have to kind of table that for a minute, understanding that we're gonna get more volume, but we're also gonna get something else. Let's listen to that something else here.
to me, that's really cool. I still hear the dry drums, but I'm also hearing the compressed drums. Let me turn the compressor on and off, and you can hear the difference that we're making here. And then here is just the compressed drums by themselves. And here are the dry drums by themselves. And here's the parallel drums. I find this to be endlessly fascinating, and personally, it took me just repetitions of doing this a lot and listening to the differences and muting and unmuting and bypassing and re-engaging plugins to really hear what was happening because there are those volume differences that will kind of trick our ears. But to me, this is really interesting. I don't do parallel processing enough because this was really fun. I got the aggressiveness of the compressed drums, but then I have completely clean drums coming through as well, and the blend of the two is really fun. You'll see this a lot. I remember reading Sound on Sound magazine, and it seems like in every issue, when someone was talking about mixing, and especially vocals for some reason, they would do some sort of parallel processing. Maybe they would duplicate it and put a distortion on the duplicate channel and blend in some distortion with the dry vocal. Or they would duplicate it and compress or duplicate a couple of times with different compressors and different limiters and go nuts with it. Careful that you don't go nuts with it because it can probably be a distraction for you. But if you've not experimented with parallel processing, I encourage you to Work on it next time you're working on a mix in the studio. You might find it's just that right tone you've been looking for that you can't get with just compression on the track, but the parallel compression starts to really give you a whole new variety of tones. It makes me think of, last thing, with guitar pedals. If you're a guitarist, some pedals have mix knobs on them. I've got a compressor pedal that has a mix knob. That's essentially parallel compression in the pedal. I'm hearing the dry signal, I'm hearing the compressed signal. I can blend between the two. Or a lot of pedals sometimes they, they brag about how, like with the Tube Screamer, I believe, the dry signal comes through and the distorted signal is laid on top. So you get a little bit of that dry signal coming all the way through the pedal, so you get a little bit of the best of both worlds. You still get the clean bite of just a raw guitar, then you get the distortion and the mid-range pump and all that on top of it. The different ways to think about essentially the same thing. Parallel processing is all over the place in the audio world. This is just a very specific example of how we use it to our benefit in mixing. If you like mixing, and of course you do, or you wouldn't still be watching this video, and you haven't gotten your free copy of my 5-Step Mix Guide, it's absolutely free. Go to 5stepmix.com to pick up your copy. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.